been on the same page, it would have been easy to beat EDG and KT. And while I don't think it's easy to take down either of those teams by any means, it certainly will look a lot better if TL can get it going on the same page. Because they do have the individual pieces. Ole, when he was on Immortals lineup, was a dangerous support. Double it for his whole career, whether it was from Curse, you know, Epic, wherever he has <laughs> been. And he's been everywhere, has been a dangerous AD carry. You know, even flashes of brilliance out of Smithy and Impact so far. Mm -hmm. You know, say what you will about Poe Balta's gameplay. I think that this is a team that has the weapons. They just have not been able to fully utilize them on display. Yeah, I definitely agree. And at least for Poe Belter on the LeBlanc game, he was trying to make moves. He, he was good until to the last play of the game. Where Mata just completely outplayed him. And that's something yeah. that was, you know, felt more of an outplay than a misplay, right? That was just incredible stuff from Mata. But, you know, he had the roam to top side, trying to get a kill there, the fight around Dragon. He was trying to make moves. He was trying yep. to be proactive. and. You know, community criticism or not, whether he is as strong as some of the other mid laners or not, does not matter. You have to play your game. You have to play it with confidence if you want to have a chance of getting out of this group. Team Liquid now selecting possibly the Braum. Maybe bring the Orn into the composition later so it can't be blocked out and Impact could have something nice on the top side. They're already looking at a Thresh, so that possible engage from K around the map and heading around with Benny could be a thing and the advantage for Mad Team. Still waiting on that pick. It could be a Hackerum. 17 seconds left on this hover. Certainly possible, but you know, when we think about the last game, TL against Mad, it was one that TL had a massive advantage in and took very late. They certainly took their time to close out the game. And it's one of those situations where maybe they are more comfortable playing just a team fight scaling style against Mad, knowing that, hey, Pound for pound, they have stronger players. They should be able to take that style of a game. And the question then becomes, you know, if you're going to play something different against EDG, should you not maybe be warming up and trying to stay aggressive, trying to play that sort of style? Because we saw them kind of try to up the tempo a little bit against KT with the LeBlanc, with the Aatrox. And if they're trying to slow it down and play a more measured style against Mad, uh, it maybe doesn't prepare you for your next game. Yeah, it certainly could be the case. I also think that there is windows that you can try and get aggressive in this draft. Mm -hmm. Maybe you go for something like Illusion. You play Illusion Braum, then the top side of the map Possible. plays facilitated to that. Things like Orn able to collapse around the map very well. And I think that, you know, they're going to give you a medium range comp down in the bottom lane. We just see Siva Thresh locked in. So it's not like this is a bad lane for Lucian no. to be able to go into. So Team Liquid can show something different in this draft. It could be all scaling. This could be a Kaiser or a Zaya, but I would like to see whether Double Lift does go back to kind of more lane kingdom. I don't think he'll go the Lucian. He hasn't played it in a really long time. That and, Jin. and I'm not sure if he's willing to risk. You know, if it goes bad and you get outscaled, I, I think, you know, this is this is what I was expecting, seeing you have the Orn, you know you're gonna have that knockup, apply the plasma, you can follow up with that ultimate yeah. there. Uh, but they are going to be looking for the, the scaling playstyle. That doesn't mean they can't make aggressive plays. That doesn't mean they can't still be proactive. But they are trying to secure the late game with this Kai'Sa, with the Orn and the Braum. And we'll see, you know, if they can get a similar lead to the first game, how they look in closing it out. Yeah, and I think red side comp is really important for Liquid right now because we did see Uni, uh, see Uni Boy kind of fall down in some team fights, had mm -hmm. some moments of brilliance, had a couple of whoopsies. Leung also able to have some good impressive plays other times not able to thread that maybe going a little yeah. bit too deep so i think that both of these teams do have volatile solo lanes dropping their priority trying to protect them a little bit i think is a wise move you know the other thing you have to always mention is the fact that matt is not playing in israel now they are playing this sivir that can have that incredibly strong late game yeah and if you play too passive you give breeze that time to scale up you give breeze that time to get going hey, maybe that can backfire on you because that Sivir really is such a massive threat. Once you have your three items, you have that IE, yeah. the ricochet damage becomes massive. Well, so, so, so far, passive is not in the books on that Mad Team composition. Following up on that Nocturne out with On the Hunt, they want to stay synergized. They want to stay on the back of those engages. And now that we have our second phase of bands done, the Camille Scion from Team Liquid at Mad Team and Jungle for a Smithy hit with Kindred and that shins up. And I want to see him go back to something like a Gragas here. I didn't think that the Skana really worked out all too well. Olaf on a similar vein. I just think that Smithy needs to be the up-tempo player. The person that gets on the map has presence and forces the uh, pace for the TL lineup. Yeah, I tend to agree. You know, generally his early game pathing is really intelligent. 
you know, people kind of talk about him like a score light, you know, not <laughs> uh, as talented of a player, but it's a similar style of play. Uh, and I do think that that can work very well because there's not a lot of guys who are often super proactive in the early game. So if you don't have Smithy on someone who can find those level three ganks, those intelligent early plays, uh, then often for TL, it becomes very, very passive. And that's where I'm going to be interested to see if they go for another skill matchup here for Poe Belter. Sindra was locked in. LeBlanc is open. He could go back to that if he wants to play aggressive, if he wants to try to make those plays and you know have a strong game for himself. Six seconds for Mad Team to lock in. I wonder Ooh. if we would see a Mundo in the top lane, and we'll keep wondering as okay. Jace is locked in for Leung. And it looks like they'll also get a Syndra in the mid lane. So got to go fast for the side of Mad Team, but they have a pretty immobile mid laner. What's the side of Team Liquid's final pick up here? Leaving that last pick for Pole Belter in the mid lane. And it could be that LeBlanc, he's putting out the damage on this event. Yeah, once again, skill matchup probably going to be locked in for Pole Belter. It is, so we'll have some windows to play around that. I do want to point out now that with that Jace pick, they've kind of fully committed to winning before the 30 minute <laughs> mark hits. I mean, yeah. this is a composition that either runs you down, gets ahead, does more damage than you, takes everything off the map and wins, or kind of just falls off a cliff as soon as Orn becomes an unstoppable force on the front line with Braum. Yeah, really can be tough. And I feel like you have to have a really strong early laning advantage because post six, it's so early easy for, for people to come up there and the Orn oh. just ultimates onto the Jace because Jace needs to have Orn under his turret, pressuring that turret, and that's exposing yeah. yourself to these ganks. Not only that, if uh, Impact is a spellbook Orn, I, so many times you just see tanks swap the ignite. ignite or exhaust, just charge into them, slow them down, take them out solo. You know, you can bring Smithy in. Iceborn Gauntlet is a great item for Orn, synergizes really well, and Jace's uh, starting health pool is not very high, so there is certainly windows for impact to outplay this. Definitely is, but that being said, if Leon can get that advantage in the 1v1, be pressuring turrets, perhaps TL never gets a chance to get to that team fight stage. They could get peeled apart. We will have to see about to be on the rift as we head down the lineups. Mad Team versus TL is Mad Team looking to play a bit of spoiler here on the record book for TL. And a position TL has been waiting to be in all year. They have fought to be on this world stage. They need to fight to get out of groups. It has not been easy for them. And we've heard from the team, they are struggling to do so and produce some results. And this is the heat check game as we are about to get onto Summoner's Rift because we've just seen Mad fall to EDG in the fashion in which they did it. The deciding matchup potentially in this group will be Team Liquid versus EDG. So now we get to see how the teams stack up. What measure that we look at, you know, bottom lane in that game. Breeze and K looks good. Can Double Lift and Ole replicate that? Can Impact build a similar lead against Liang in the top lane? So many interesting questions as we get into this game. Uh, you really have to think, you know, for TL to have a chance against EDG, they need to start building their confidence. You want to have a game here where not only do you win, but you look really good doing it. You have the individual outplays. You have that team supporting each other, getting pumped up, getting excited, because I do think you need to be playing on that higher level as you're going into any potential elimination games and any potential really, really tough games. And that's why teams like Vitality have been so impressive this world, because they just come in, they say, we don't give a damn, we're gonna play our style. They're loud, they're in your face, they're able to continue that hype, that momentum, and it has to be generated somewhere. Doublelift is one of those players that has had so many international uh, international failures, hasn't been able to generate that success. He would even in his own mind be thinking, is this me? I'm going to all these different teams. I'm not able to do it on the international stage. At what yeah. point is it my shot calling? Is it my leadership? So I think even on the individual player level, they just need to start believing that they can accomplish this. And that's kind of what Doublelift said is that they're focusing on individual performance still at points in this game, which means they're not focused on the team. And that's a split mentality they cannot have right now. Yeah, it really isn't. And again, on the side of Mad, you know, these guys are eliminated, but they're playing for pride. And, you know, they can be a team here, wants to make their mark. Well, how about eliminating the first seed from North America? You win here, you know, they can be completely out of contention given an EDG win yeah. over Mad, right? You know, it, it doesn't even have to matter about that TL uh, versus Mad matchup. So certainly EDG 
uh, would be very much so cheering for Mad. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that this is kind of different to other elimination games because in the past, you're like, go out there, you know, show your individual brilliance. But mm -hmm. I do want to see if this team can come together. And they've picked a hard composition to be able to do it. But we've seen individual brilliance. You know, Konya not in this game. Benny going to be subbing in. But he's had some good games. Breeze and K, they've looked good on the stage. They've been windows from the solo laners, but it just never come together. This is a hard comp to do it. But if they can get an early mid game rolling, potentially can show some of that class. Definitely a potential there. It's also interesting to note that this is a Conqueror Jace. You almost Ooh. always see Aerie, I feel like. Aerie yep. is certainly the most common by far. Uh, this tells me that it feels like he really wants to hard commit to split push. He wants to be able to continue that advantage further than just the early levels. Having that true damage from the Conqueror uh, to be able to kind of perhaps have more of a potential for the 1v1. And they'll be interested to see if he builds more heavily uh, for that 1v1 as a result. Impact able to uh, stay in lane, get a few more items for himself here. Slowly leveling up as he's pushed into that 75% mark on the wave. Having a few minions denied here as he's at the turret. And Young's doing a very good job at being aggressive on that top side of the map. He may see X Smithy soon. And this is the thing Oop. that they have to be able to do. They have to be able to build waves and repetitively crash them. That means there's a threat of the dive. That means Smithy is going to have to continue to think, maybe I need to be top lane on this big wave. I need a secure impact farm. If he doesn't get it, he's not going to be able to stand up in the 1v1 of the split push. So if Leung doesn't hard shop, but if he continues to build, last hit, harass, take away those health potions, it will continue to mount pressure on the tank player in the top lane to be able to turn this around. And there is always the potential, if you can get that Orin low enough, even if Smithy shows up, maybe you can pull off a 1v2. Or maybe the Nocturne's there for the counter gank and it just goes so bad uh, for TL. So really going to have to track him and his performance in this game. We see the stopwatch for impact coming up there. So he is knowing that he's going to be getting a little bit of pressure just before or around that level six. As we head back down to the bot lane, 27 to 26, all even on the home front here as Ole and K try to get a bit of brush control and control the lane. Relic for uh, K as well. I don't usually see that on Thresh, but it'll be a bit tanky. And I think it's because, you know, there is the opportunity for those windows of aggression. You know, t uh, mm -hmm. Ole leaping onto a minion, trying to take you out. Mm -hmm. Still some good burst damage coming out of the Kaiser at this stage of the game. Actually saw Uzi pick up so many first bloods on the champion when he was playing it on turnaround gang. So interested to see that actually even more damage goes across where the TL do try and accelerate the pace through the bottom lane. Yeah, and I think they are doing a pretty good job of getting that harass down. Another potion was just popped by double lift, but you know, Breeze is not playing fleet footwork. He is playing lethal tempo. Oh. He's been getting poked pretty heavily. He has no more potions, so uh, he's going to have to be fairly careful. You take too much more damage here and uh, maybe having to just head right back to base. I'm going to say they're trying to keep that lane pushed as much so double lift can't get it to the turret, and he's... <laughs> He is taking quite a bit of damage for it. Benny and X Smithy gonna meet each other in the jungle, so that knowledge is now privy to both teams. A quick blast cone over, and nothing's really gonna happen towards the bot lane on this. Mid lane's still pretty even, 42 to 39. I think it might be a little longer before we see that level six come up for Benny. He's five, as well as Xmithy. Yeah, you can see Pobolter got the push, so Smithy just wraps around now and wants to try to contest for this wave. Uh, Uniboy's just staying mid lane, though. And that's really nice coordination coming out there. It's actually Hook comes out and they go for the fight. Teleport down on that bot side. Should be Breeze coming back in. A quick boomerang into the brush. And they'll get a quick damage trade on that. K going quite low, though. They're not coming up with the result they wanted. He does pay for it with his flash, but yeah. that completely disrupts the base timing there of TL. Doublelift and Olay never got to go back to base. There's already Breeze back with a BS sword. So Doublelift makes a call. I'm going to stay in lane, grabs those honey fruit. Uh, from the lane, he's going to have to try to farm it out, which is going to mean you can't really go aggressive onto this marksman. And Siva is one of those oppressive champions that if she gets a base on you, she makes you play against uh. the wave. You never even play against the Siva anymore. She just repetitively pushes into you. If you try and harass, she just gets mana back. And so what I think they're going to try and do is stagger the recall, because whilst she can do that, she still can't really dive you at this stage of the lane unless you tank so many skill shots. So you can see they sent Ole back. Now all of a sudden on the next wave, they can send double lift back. Ole can try and catch that, maybe even hold it off turret and see what happens. So does anything need to happen on the bot side for Mad? Actually, stuff happened the on, the, on the top side as the Orn Horn comes off. They get a good hit under the young. He goes straight on to impact very low, and they're actually going to lose Xsmithy right away on this one as Benny comes in real fast. Paranoia just coming up. 
and I don't think TL expected it. And we mentioned the fact that there could be a counter gank potential. Benny reads it like a book, knows that they've changed it around to the Ignite top lane. Impact goes aggressive, but it is a mad team lineup that punishes it. Yeah, as you said, read them like a book. Impact hits six, Smithy is six, but Benny is in range to respond to this, and it starts out very well here for Impact. He gets the knock up, the ignite is down, he hits the ultimate as well. Everything looks like it's gonna be a free first blood, but Liang simply jumps over right onto Smithy. The axe does not come at, and he flashes out. Benny comes in and kills off Smithy, which means Impact doesn't have enough damage in the tank to get a kill. Yeah, and the big thing there was they got very greedy because that was a teleport back to lane. They thought if they can chunk him out now, this carry is going to be useless. So let's go to the first play available. Didn't really check for where Nocturne was on the map. That's something that normally Smithy is commended for in the North American LCS, but maybe just rushing the play, looking for it a little bit too early, not getting that vision out, and it comes back and it bites him in the bum to the point now where Impact, without summoner spells, actually still has the flash, but going to have to be a little bit more careful in that top lane. Yep. Oh, bottom lane's still rough though. <laughs> well, I mean, you are certainly taking the worst end of the trades as the team of Mad. Uh, they have been kind of losing in that regard, but you know, they're up a couple farm. It's basically just dead even, and they're going for the all in. Airborne K is back onto the ground to flay out as he goes back. Oh, beautiful hit on to double lift. That's going to deny a bit of damage, but is it enough? The shield comes back up and he's still going to fall. Oh. Double lift now stares himself into a great position with that movement speed, and they get the kills on Mad's bot lane. The beautiful plays there from double lift, saving his ult to the last moment, completely baited Breeze in. Breeze fastest forward thinking, I can finish off this kill, yep. but heal is still available. Kaisa ultimate is still available. And they get the kills on the bottom side, playing aggressive with the scaling picks, and they're gonna be able to take a dragon as well. And Smithy forced another play in the window where Nocturne ult wasn't available. That is the intelligent play that you wanna see out of your jungler. They look for a steal, very nice door coming out from Ole. And this bottom lane all of a sudden, you know, 2v2 kill, jungle participation at the last moment, but certainly would have had it regardless and showing that they are still a force to be reckoned with. Smithy hovering around towards mid. Looks like they'll take a moment to figure out Whoa. how Boy is gonna answer on right. this. And Benny actually throws down the paranoia thinking they were gonna get ganked on the mid side. Yeah, I think Benny thought when he saw the double distortion, Hobelter's committing. They're going for this kill yeah. and we'll see what happened by. Yeah, here it is one more time. They know K has no flash, remember? Off of him stopping their bases, he committed his flash. They say, all right, let's go straight for the thresh. But then a beautiful hook from K, looked like it might have been able to turn it around. Yeah. But you have to notice Doublet saved the heal, still has ult. Yeah, it certainly does. Use it to create the maximum distance away. They fight away from Benny, so there is no chance for a turnaround kill. K was a little bit tankier than I think they initially suspected, mm -hmm. so it became maybe a riskier play, but you can just see the class of Doublet standing up tall in that 2v2. Volcanic rupture start here. We'll see if he can get Leong with a good bit of damage. Half form day. change. Yeah. Oh, wait Smithy, Smithy. Smithy is spotted out. Benny does not have his ultimate though, and Pole Belter is roaming, and this could be dangerous. This could be the potential three-man dive. Scryer's Bloom hits Pole Belter. Ornhorn comes out. Leon doing his best to get out of this one in the 3v1. He gets knocked down before he can lay out the hammer. Pole Belter picks that one up. And he thought he had the CC to interrupt the knockup, but it was buffered earlier by impact. That's just a very well-crafted dive. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And TL just gonna go straight back up to the top lane. Didn't work with two. How about with three. You know, impact at this point is actually up farm on the Jace. The Jace has not been able to significantly pressure the turret, so it's going to get very tough for him as Impact picks up more and more armor. Resources a bit towards top, but vision for TL focused towards the bot side of the map. So Pole Belter, Double Lift, and Ole can stay safe while Smithy gets these roams on. We said he had to be active. We said he had to start doing things for Team Liquid with that experience in the early game being the, such a veteran for the team. And this is one of those games where, you know, you can look at the drafting and can say, I can see what they're doing, but when it would have been only a Kaiser and really LeBlanc as damage threats, you know, not all that much AD picked up, you really do start to question the Jace pick because it hasn't had all that much success in the early game. If he was on something, you know, like that Mundo and was able to just frontline, yeah. would this be more of a successful team fight? Because you feel like Mad has really put themselves on a much steeper clock this time around. They certainly have, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, they're already eliminated. You want to take your swing, right? They, they have not had success. 
against these teams in the later stages of the game. Show other teams why they should be afraid of you. Exactly. To, you know, take that swing the on, on the Jace. If the early game goes really well, if he can get that advantage, hey, that's a way that you can win. That's a clear win condition. Yeah. Whereas their team fighting has just not been of the same class of, of some of these other teams. So I can respect uh, the attempt, but as you say, it does give them a very win narrow win condition, and it, it feels like, you know, that's closing a little bit. Like in this crescent of vision, TL is able to protect on the bot side. It allows Ix Smithy into the face of Benny. Okay. How far does he really want to go in? Ragnarok is on! Oh my god! Doesn't matter if they don't have crowd control, they have the follow-up damage. Benny grabbing a kill on Ix Smithy. And you say you like the crescent of vision. Well, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they knew that Benny they saw and Hey, were rotating to that play. And they, if the jungler sticks around for that long, like, what else are they going to do, Smithy? <laughs> Once again, just a baffling play out of the jungler of TL. Got step one. That was seeing him. Step two <laughs> is, is reacting. Working on step two for the time being. Well, I had to break it to you, boys. They better, like, really cram for this exam coming up because it's a couple true. of games' time. They're going to have to take down EDG if they want to get out of this group. Yeah, EDG's coming to this thinking didn't really let a turret down. We were on mad right away. They weren't able to really get anything back. And they're finding the sore spots of where TL is having these open windows where mad can attack, mad can get back into the game. We'll see bot lane here. It's TL going a little too hard. Yeah, I mean, I think Smithy just felt, hey, I have the ultimate. They are not going to have enough damage to burst me down, but that was obviously very incorrect as K hits the hook, Benny ults in on him, and they just straight up blow him up through the ultimate. So well played and a good punish by Mad, but as the Observer showed us, that was spotted. K was seen on the ward roaming up. That was, you know, fully in vision there for TL. That was an interesting play from uh, Smithy, unfortunately. However, it still is going to be a TL lead, uh, gold lead. They're not transferring any of these kills into objectives. None of the lanes are going all that poorly when you take a look at the CS. You know, mid lane up a little bit, but then AD carry as well as top lane for TL, certainly standing tall. So certainly had worse landing phases. I just, they haven't passed the test to me of getting on the same page, making their proactive plays. The top lane dive was great. That's what you want to see. But then all of a sudden that invade on the bottom side, that's a bit janky. So you can see once again, you know, why there is doubts about this team. What is that next move? Seeing that they've kind of lost that vision towards the bot side. Do they focus Uniboy? Do they focus again towards Leong on the top side? Where should TL go next? I mean, it's, it's hard to say. I think for now, they are pretty happy just farming even, despite the fact that, yes, they have made some mistakes. Similar to in the EDG game, you definitely favor what they have built for themselves in the later stages. I think it is hard for Jace to team fight up against this. And if Jace can't get an advantage in the side lane in the 1v1, which he hasn't, well, then you have to kind of team fight. And that's where it can get really rough for them. So, hooks on. Oh, what a nice, nice pick. prediction hook from K. He throws it back in, expecting Ole would try to escape. And they get another kill. This one for Uniboy now. They have great participation across the board on Mad Team. And whilst as a Jace, it is great if you can generate your own lead, there is a situation where this Sivir just starts knocking down turrets quicker than you can keep up, open up the map, and then all of a sudden Leong just has to be able to do this against Impact, which with his kit doesn't really change at any stage of, his, of the game. That's yeah, certainly the case. I mean, if the four-man squad can get advantages, well, then all you really need to do is just hold Impact in the top lane, make it so Impact can't roam and actually join those plays. And, you know, Benny, uh, Uniboy, and the bot lane have been able to make some Whoa. things happen. Beautiful scatter on the distortion coming in. Uniboy dodges out in quite a bit of damage. Is a lot more resources now put around that Raptor area of Mad and Pobelter's mid lane. And I love preemptive flashes because you get hit by the skill shot, you make the mistake. Sure, it's going to suck for you for the next five minutes that you have to play without that cooldown, but you're still in a laning phase, and it's better than giving Pobelter a kill, allowing him to snowball the game even further potentially also costs the dragon here, but you have to pay the price if that is what happens. Totally agree. There's, there's far too many times where you do see those late flashes, the death anyway, uh, and then you've certainly lost so much. Oh. And Kay may have overextended here. Kay is not K. He gets on the hunt from Breeze, but the crop control is already locked down, and so is K. Breeze left alone on bot side. Four to three now in favor of TL. Double lift, a little bit of a speed steroid to get the plasma shots and passive on to Breeze, but he can't pop it. Yeah, a couple of good proactive plays there, though, from TL. Pobelter getting priority in the mid lane. They transfer that down, getting a dragon. K really shouldn't have come over to even check, though, because great, you know they're yeah. on the dragon. What can you do about it? Your mid laner isn't base. Benny's not around. There's no attempt to really challenge for it. So just give that up. Instead, he gives up his life. Now means there's pressure on the bottom side of the map. 
You can see, however, that they don't want to do anything with that pressure. Instead, they just run away, trying to keep the lanes. I would think if you're TL right now, the longer the laning phase, go phase goes for without turrets being broken, the more confident you are. They have got some damage on your turrets, but until they fall, that doesn't really mean anything. The worry is, is if now you don't decide to push for first turret, you don't try and break up the laning phase, if Mad pick up a kill or a skirmish somewhere and start knocking down these structures, because all three of them are below half health, then it becomes a very rough mid-game to try and contend with. Yeah, it's definitely the case, but... Double lift, very look for the fight. Mad. TP coming in. Breeze took a bit of turret aggro. Impact coming down as well as Leong. He's on the turret. Impact's already into the fight as they can't see a thing from Benny's ultimate. Hornhorn goes off just as they get sight, and they're going to be on decay. He comes back up and might be going back down, but he gets himself out safely with a flash. And another great preemptive flash. They cancel the teleport. Leong now can stay top lane. They're going to take a second turret for themselves. This is now an open map for the Jays to be able to go to work. TL, however, with a good teleport, will be able to answer bottom lane. Bray's in trouble. Dark passage to the light for him. K keeps him safe, and they're going to try to get damage down now onto bottom turret first, and second turret in favor of Mad here, as they are just all over the map before TL can get to their position. I really did like the defensive ultimate from Benny there on the Nocturne as well. Mix things up, kind of make it very hard for TL to have the right communication, have the right vision to go forward, and Breeze is going to go straight for the Rift Herald now, TPing over to it. K is already over there. Hobelter is looking to push and try to punish here. The gold is still even though, and you know, Matt is doing a good job of, of kind of trying to stay proactive and knocking down some of these turrets. Herald going to be so important here because mid lane has just become a jockey back and forward for position. You can see TL trying to use their superior numbers to pressure out the turret. However, if they grab Rift Herald, they should be able to counter attack this in response. Quick clean up as the visions push forward on the bot. And Mad kind of gives up that top side. But are the grab Rift Herald? We'll see where they use it. As Team Liquid continues to absorb the resources of Mad Team Leong, just getting himself to safety as he changes forms for a bit of movement. Speed. And so much of this gold lead right now would be just sitting on double lift. You can see that he's at about 8,000 gold. He's 1,100 off and has been able to do a great job. Scatter the weak lands, ultimate out. Who's the target? Leon can throw down the gate, and now they can move a little bit faster with the on the hunt. First bit of damage isn't good enough for Mad to really want to continue. Yeah, really well absorbed there by TL, but they're using this to try to preempt the dropping of the Rift Herald to try to go for this turret, and they should get the charge. They will get the turret, but in comes Impact. Outer ring of turrets down in favor of Mad. Smithy trying to get in from the side. Ornhorn comes out. Paranoia is not there to be used this time, but it doesn't hit anybody. Breeze has the first oh, hit. Beautiful job him. by Povelter. Ignite goes down, and he gets the assassinations rolling for LeBlanc in the mid lane. Leung's forced to run bot side. Povelter over the wall with the distortion. He'll head back as the team wants to get a little more pressure on the map rather than fight. But that's a much better idea of how to play the team fight by Team Liquid. They absorb the first blow. They don't fight over the turret this time. And then a great time rotation from Impact allows them to pick up the kills. I think this is more of what we want to see. The late mid, mid to late game execution seeming, seeing much more clearness. It certainly is, but... Credit to Matt, have knocked down three turrets by 20 minutes. Very well done to move around the map, knock out all of those outers. That being said, Doublelift is on his two items now. The Nasher is completed, and he is going to start getting very, very scary at this point in the game. Matt is going to have to be very clean on their execution in the team fight because if you cannot knock Doublelift out at the start of the fight, once Smithy and Impact are in the face of the Mad Team carries, Doublelift can then follow up and dive in on that Kai'Sa and really start to dish out some damage. And these aren't the hybrid bruiser top lane jungle, you know. This isn't going to be a Black Cleaver. This is going to be full tank on, full tank Olaf. <laughs> run at the Sivir, see what she can do. She's not going to be able to build IE third, most likely, because she's probably going to have to go for a last Whisper item. Freeze could just get sacked every game. Yeah, it could be really tough for him. And, you know, we asked the question earlier with the Conqueror for the young, would it be about a full one-on-1v1 -on -one -on build? And it, it certainly is looking that way. And you know, we see a Blade of the Rune King being built towards that is much less about the team fight, that is about staying relevant in the 1v1 against Impact. I'm expecting that to just be followed up with a straight-up Lord Dominix. If you want to be able to 1v1 this yeah. Orn, that is going to give you the best chance to do so. Ooh, nice scatter. Uni Boy trying to set up the Dark Spheres if they have to get an Unleashed Power out. They're just trying to find where TL is here and there. This game's sitting on a nice edge as well for both teams, and I'm sure TL has the pressure on them right Ooh. now. 
great damage from Pobelter as he starts to relieve a bit of that pressure, but I don't think they consider themselves to be at an even portion of the game 20 minutes in yeah, with I mean, Mad Team. Uniboy has to be careful, and now it's on to Leung. Leung looking like he's in a bad spot, tries to get the hammer down onto Pobelter. That kill going over to its smithy. They get a little more free time in the middle of the map, but can TL start to push the advantage forward? And once again, it's these cheat rotations without full vision of where you're heading to that is costing the Mad Team. As now they go top lane. Killer Instinct onto Breeze, and goodbye! That's a cool one across the face of Double Lift as he picks up another kill. Double Lift making it look easy there. 1v1 kill against Breeze. Breeze steps up. No business being that aggressive in the 1v1 against Double Lift. If K is not there with him, he cannot stand up, and it's gonna be not only his life, it will be another turret going the way of TL. More gold being injected into Double Lift here, and you can see he's gonna be working towards the Zonias very yep. likely, which not only is it very good at preemptive ultimates on the Nocturne ult to deny that, it works great against Syndra and that ultimate, so here it is one more time, sneaks into the bush, looks for the plasma. Yeah, it just gets the invisibility. You can see ultimate comes out of breeze. You can't run oh. away fast enough. No flash available. Double if both summoner spells. So that was pretty much a clean solo kill. Also has himself just 70 CS, if you do not mind, gentlemen, in his back pocket. And, I mean, probably the best scaling AD, AP, slash hybrid marksman. <laughs> Whatever Kaiser is, Assassin, hybrid Assassin, tank, mage, wave clear like tank, everything else uh, in the game right yeah. now. And we were wondering what what AD would he pick in, in Champions? Like what could it be? Oh yeah, it's the Kaiser again. It was up. 24 minutes in, mid turret goes down in favor of Team Liquid as they start to push and encroach those wards a little bit farther forward now to figure out what Mad Team has in mind. And it's always fun to put teams under the microscope as potentially Paul Belter looking for it. Ooh, the double distortion, good damage onto Breeze. They can't really see where their target is, but it doesn't matter. The Ornhorn absolutely walking all over <laughs> Breeze to take him down. Yeah, that's a strike for Impact. Oh, and TL gonna go over to the Baron. Really turning up the pace here. We asked for a clean game from them, and now getting this Baron should be theirs very easily. We'll see if they can secure it. There's a blue orb. Can they get anything into the pit to allow Benny to go oh, forward? Oh, 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 Scatter the weak. Beautiful job by Uniboy. Baron's still going to be in the favor of Team Liquid, but now they're getting chased out of the fight, and Mad Team is not one to give up that position. Jace gate a little too far back for the speed up they needed, and TL will get away. Losing Poe Belter. And said they're going to look to push out some waves, but really that's a great collapse towards the Baron for TL. They keep four members alive. Poe Belter doesn't really burn anything, although he goes down. So, got to say this mid game looking pretty good for the North American squad. Yeah, looking really good. And well, it was a very nice kill from Uniboy onto Poe Belter. That's both summoners down. There's no one to protect you from the Ornn ultimate. So now Syndra becomes such an easy target in the next fight. And this is Poe Belter setting it up. Breeze gets very low and then Look at that damage coming through. I just love that it's all the tank initiation that they throw at him. You know, you got yourself a Kaiser, you got an Olaf, but all the long range initiation ults just pegged at the ultimate of uh, the AD carry of Mad. And everybody's trying to help. One of them saying, I'll break the shield, you get the CC. It's all in and all or nothing right now for Team Liquid. 3K gold lead as they're still on Mad's side of the map. Now, I really want to take a moment to kind of and look at the game state, certainly TL very heavily in the advantage, has the Baron buff. Remember how quickly uh, we saw KT close out the game post Baron buff against TL. You want to see how well can you do from this advantage? How much are you gonna push the base? Yep. Because this is similar to the it kind of advantages they did accrue in their first time against Mad, and there was a lot of criticism towards how long it took them to actually close it out. There was an interview as well with Poe Belter where you know he was talking about, yeah, anyone can see we took a lot longer than we needed to to close out that game. And you know, I would love to see them try to do this a little bit more cleanly, a little bit more quickly than they did the first time around. Yeah, and I want to see whether it's through a force or whether it's through, you know, trying to push all three lanes and kind of the decision-making process that TL go for. Because you could argue right now, if they just group up as five, there's no flash on Uniboy. There's no flash on K. This is a pretty easy to execute dive. Given the fact that Impact is just a super tank on the front line, but you can see that they're playing it a little bit more standard. They're just jockeying for position around the map, trying to isolate matchups and take all of the standing goals. Yeah, exactly. Grabbing all of those outer turrets, moving down to the last one. They have the wave pushing in their direction. You can see Smithy pushing in mid, Pobelter's up on top, and the three-man squad here looking to pressure up onto this turret. 
Here they go. Hornhorn comes out. They break the spell shield over onto Benny. They're going to try to get him first. A good hook from K, but it is quickly disengaged. And now the health bars of Mad Team are just being wiped away as the paranoia slows down TL for just a moment, but they'll head back to the structures and start to run it down bot lane. And I think that's a good sign of the mindset of Team Liquid right now. They could have just looked to extended siege, try and close this one out, but they make the aggressive play and now they're trying to break the base. Nice shock blast, but it does not deter Team Liquid. The damage is not there from Leung right now. He's forced to turn away and now in hammer form, so he can't even do much at that point. Inhibitor going down in favor of Team Liquid as Cobelter still on a one-man mission in the mid lane. Yeah, and TL now looking for this second inhibitor. Probably should reset here with the amount of gold that's going to be in their pockets. Doublelift has you know, over 3k to spend oh, right now. <laughs> Closer to four. So he's a very rich guy and half of the gold lead pretty much sitting just in the purchase column. But once again, I think that is a very promising sign. I think the pull the trigger, take away the inhibitor, also grab a cheeky turret in the mid lane on the way out. If we can't end on this Baron buff, you know, we'll be able to close much easier with the dual lane break. And once again, they could have seized, but instead, as soon as Smithy's in behind, they decide to go. Yep, and the spell shield was used early there by Benny. They know they can go all in. Double is diving into the back lines there. The stopwatch buying some time for Benny, but everyone is just getting shredded through and Mad are able to disengage with just the one death, but many flashes out, the stopwatch used, and their base is broken. And even in that play, you can see that it's actively Pobelter rotating. He was in the top lane. As soon as everyone goes towards the bottom lane, he goes to the mid lane. He wants to be an active participant. So you can argue right now that the setup out of Team Liquid is looking much cleaner on today's mm -hmm. play. The execution has been good, but the other question was, how did their setup look? Yep, it certainly has been looking good. The boxes have been checked, but you still have to kill the Nexus. And we'll see how quickly they are able to manage that with an inhibitor down, with another open, with a you know, 9,000 gold lead. You have to expect that they should be able to do it quickly. Easy to say, hard to do, and Mad Team is definitely putting up a big defensive wall. Even with the bot side of the map broken, they have a decent push on the wave for a possible fight and a little bit of a window to push Team Liquid back out, but it is very small, and it's about to be closed on the fingers of Mad. Double it, bring in the top, wave in. Impact has the Orn horn up, and Pole Belter will again spread the team slightly thin as he pushes mid. And you can see Mad Team certainly trying to hold on. You gotta remember, uh, the LMS at this world has not had the run they were looking for. Flash will the number one seed falling out prematurely when people would have expected them to have a much better performance mad now the second seed for this region also struggling to find form this might be one of their last chances to do so yeah mad is gonna have to force now the supers are in the bottom lane they're gonna be on to the nexus turrets and this is where it gets so tough pressure in three lanes coming out from tl Team Liquid nicely buying time. This is where you can't make the mistakes. You have to be able to close out the end game. Hornhorn goes off and Benny just takes the shot to himself. And that's the inhibitor for double lift as they use the pressure just to get a bit of map movement. Okay, that is well disengaged. There's no major objective on the map for a minute. Cloud Drake, you can give over and they can look to try and push these waves out. Difficulty is now with two inhibitors down and still going to be a minute difference between your bottom inhibitor and the Baron spawn, you need a miracle of a steal if you want to any, have any hope in withstanding the next siege that comes out. What a benefit, three Cloud Drakes against the team that wants to go fast with Mad. <laughs> and now Doublelift's gonna be able to avoid so much more of what Mad's thrown out. Cloud Drakes are criminally underrated. Yeah, I'm telling you. We love Cloud Drakes in NA. What the chase down a whole team on Aurelia yesterday due to Cloud Drakes. Yeah, I mean, I think that people never really like adjusted their perception of it once it became in combat move yes. speed as well. Uh, that is certainly something that is very powerful. I mean, you, you saw for so long how highly rated Swifty boots were, you know, for supports. Well, this is kind of a similar idea. That extra move speed allows you to position properly in the fights, can allow you to chase down fights that you may not be able to uh, get into normally, and also lets you get out of some situations you wouldn't otherwise be able to. Or get into. Let's go. Try to get into those fight spots. Team Liquid completely denying vision and setting up a beautiful security system on the top side of the map as Baron will be on the menu. It looks like they'd be able to grab that with a table for two. And that's a really good way of just setting up a Baron to make sure there's no steal. If you just leave your tank and your AD carry, they walk into Fog of War. You know that they haven't been there in enough time to get vision down for any kind of teleport, any kind of steal coming in from Benny. So 
Team Liquid, once again, just checking tick boxes off. This is a slow, methodical closeout, but we're still only 32 minutes into the game. This isn't a 40-minute, you know, slugfest by any Bonanza, and they have controlled the aggression of MAD. Where, in a similar fashion, EDG just said, all right, we'll fight you at the same time. TL <laughs> trying to show a little bit more composure, I think. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's two teams in a different situation, right? And not only, I think, is TL trying to prove to the community like, that they can represent and the NALCS well at Worlds. They're trying to prove to themselves that they can really play at this high level, that they can have dominating games, you know, that really can compete with the best teams. And having a clean game here is, is maybe the first step. Look, he's on. I'm gonna say it. Impact want that searing charge. You hooked him right into his volcanic rupture, and he's gonna throw the Orn Horn out as well. The box slightly deterring Team Liquid along with the paranoia. Ole gets locked in, but the shields are big. He's gonna stay alive, and now they're gonna return the damage onto Matt. Benny is down, and the inhibitor on the top side is as well. Minions pouring in on the bottom as Team Liquid is here to stay in the end of the game in their eyes. And poor Breeze, he's trying what he can. The rest of the team trying to hold Ooh. up, but they're just not doing damage. Ole limping around with a sliver of health in this one. Hasn't even gotten the heal from Double Lift just yet. They'll throw it out for a moment. And a bit of movement speed there to keep him alive. In for impact. impact. Nothing really going to come of that one. The Nexus turret does go down. The minions, the Winions inside the base right now. Liquid. Very low on HP, but they're gonna try to dance this one out. Breeze with the Breeze. auto attack in. Doesn't have the crit to take down Pope Elster. 33 minutes into the game, a double kill here for Breeze, but he goes down, kills from the grave for him. They'll feel good, but not as good as a win. Team Liquid push forward and take down Mad Team. And they keep their world's hopes alive. Still in with the shot here now. It's gonna be all about EDG versus KT and TL versus EDG. And Team Liquid showing that they can get on the same page, that they can slow the game back down, that they can pick up objectives and close the game out rather cleanly. Still some errors that they would like to address, you know, counter gank top lane, giving up first blood, maybe an over-aggressive invade onto a Raptor camp. But apart from that, this is a team that looks like they're coming into game uh, day two much more focused, much more on the same page. Even their game against KT, I think, was an improvement. This shows an additional step forward. Definitely agree. I mean, when you're comparing this to the first time around that they fought against Mad, it took them a lot longer to be able to close that game out from a similar advantage, and TL taking a well-deserved bow to the crowd there. And instead of what the team brings forward is the things that are plaguing them, to just plague them again, TL seems to have righted the ship on a few of those mentality issues, focusing on themselves, but more so now focusing on the team and how to improve that. And I think that the veterans, you know, now having better performances, that double if mm -hmm. looking for these solo kills, looking to get a little bit more aggressive, even for the mindset and the mentality, it seems to be heading in the right direction. Absolutely, and let's see what the State Farm Analyst Desk makes of Team Liquid's victory. Thank you, Riv. The golf clap victory. Team Liquid gets the necessary win over Mad Team to keep their hopes of a quarter, quarterfinal spot alive. But it's, it's exactly that, right? Just yeah. the game to keep the hopes alive. They haven't done it yet. Well, we've got two horses in this race now. It means the day hasn't been deflated, that it is going to be a decider, we hope, between Edward Gaming and TL. They are relying on KT taking out EDG in the next game before they face them in the fifth game of the day. I do want to touch on this game, though, and how Team Liquid snagged the victory. I asked you guys to hit me with the one most important th thing across the board you wanted to see them change coming into it. A quick reminder, we had Ole on a comfort pick. Did he do it? Yes, his most right. played. We had Don't Get Outscaled. Deficio, did we do it? Kaisa Orn, they outscaled. All righty. And we have Xmithy on a ganking jungler. Jat, did we do it? I think Olaf counts as far as ganking early game jungler. All right. I agree. All right. I agree. So Great we, we checked three three. most of the boxes. Job, but even after we've checked the boxes in the preparation, we still have to execute on it in the game. Yeah, and I got a little bit scared early because some of the first plays actually were pretty good for Matt. X Smithy didn't have the greatest start to the game, but I did see in the bottom lane, Double Lift started picking up kills, and that's all I needed to stay confident in TL. I'm just happy to finally see Double Lift enter the game. It feels, like, it feels like a lot of the times he's picked the scaling champion, his team didn't get him into a position where he could actually act, but this time around he came Check alive. Check this 1v1. And yeah. it really did pop off in that bot lane. <laughs> they got pretty active in lane, and that's the big thing. When he was 2-0 and the enemy bot laner was behind, 
And then the fact that they actually had a reliable trigger pull that wasn't on Ole was super important. Having impact on the Orn gave them confidence when they were engaged. Yeah, I think there's a couple big things. You know, just as well as we did see that very first play of the roll where they get, you know, fall victim to the nocturne ult. The play that follows in the bot lane was them using that window of no nocturnal to know that they could go aggressive, something we asked for them to shore up after their loss to KT. Yeah, and I think with TL, from everything they're saying themselves, with some of the stage issues, everything we've seen as well, it's too late now to make big changes and fix some of the larger issues you have. It's so band-aids. You just band-aid now, and that's you just draft around some of the, your problems you have. Okay, Ole as the only engage, not working for you, grab the Orn instead, and you get engaged from top lane. One, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, I, one of the band-aids that I'm actually really excited that I think they have done is Poe Belter. I think having these back-to-back -back games on LeBlanc, and even though the first one didn't turn into a win, mm -hmm. Poe Belter looks so much better, so much more confident in a side lane, and I love the mobility that it allows Poe Belter. A lot of the time, he'll just wander off to a side lane, he's creating a pressure point, and he's picked off and he dies at the worst moment for TL. On a champion like LeBlanc, that's not happening, and it gives him a pocket pick that if this comes down to EDG versus TL, now he has something to contest Scout with. Yeah, Poe Belter was one of the guys we were looking to step up today if Team Liquid was going to make it out of the group. The MasterCard player of the game, though, goes to doublelift in the bot lane on that Kai'Sa. Yeah, when Team Liquid wins, it's usually when they're playing around doublelift with having doublelift succeed. Kai'Sa as a late game pick. We saw this during the highlight reel as well. Able to control side lanes on Kai'Sa, able to control laning phase on Kai'Sa. Comboed so well with that Ornn ultimate in team fights. And doublelift says this himself when he succeeds. He says, when I succeed, it's because the whole team is playing around me. So he's never, in his words, had a team that plays around him this much. And when he can win like that, it's successful. It's just a matter of replicating this performance against the superior teams in this group like EDG and KT. So, real quick, looking forward to that EDG game. Would you say that all of those same notes that you guys had for this mad game apply to facing a team like EDG? Or does the strategy change there? I mean, mm. I've watched this team all year and I've seen them win with the tank engage top and the double of hyper care, and then they're like, but we gotta try to do some other stuff, and then they lose, and then they go back to this, and then they three all the finals. Right. So I think it stays exactly the same. I think this team wins one way, and they gotta replicate that. And I do agree that that's the win condition for TL versus Edward Gaming, but they must survive the early game. EDG are actually one of the weaker team fighting teams in the LPL, but their ability to play the early game and get a lot of leads, expect that the dive is coming, make sure that you have your teleport available, and know that you must protect double if for the first 15 minutes. Even if EDG are one of the weaker teamfight teams in probably the greatest teamfight region, yeah. I am it's not pretty good. sure <laughs> that uh, TL late game, if the drafts are equally strong in the late it's game, it's not a given that Team Liquid win. gets the team fights. Yeah. But the point of not getting outskilled definitely still stands because TL are not going to play fast in the early game and like run over EDG. And listen, Edward Gaming still has the power. They can beat KT and fight for first in this Right, group, then, so. then all this is moot. Playing TL is the backup plan for EDG. Very much so. Again, yeah, Team Liquid facing off against EDG in Game 5. Before that, we have KT against EDG. Before we go to break, Shox is standing by with Team Liquid support for an interview. Thank you very much. I'm here with Ole after doing what you had to do to stay in the race, beating Mad. How do you look back on the game? How do you think you did? Uh, I think I died nearly near way in Dragon side. I, actually, that was so bad. Uh, I think I just tried to protect Peter. You know, he if he get ahead, he can just carry himself. So, yeah, I think I was just focusing on protect Peter. I mean, it worked out. He carried uh, very hard in that game. Uh, of course, there is a lot of pressure on Team Liquid. You guys do stay in the race. And much like at MSI, it's everyone is looking at you guys for what you can do for North America. How do you feel you are dealing with the pressure in comparison to MSI at this world? Um, I think I got confidence. But I, I feel some kind of weird, like, I don't know, like on stage, like, I don't really play like what I play in Scream. Like in Scream, I play with my own, but like on stage, I just turn to be like just follower or didn't really play with my own opinion. So, yeah, I think I need to bring, like, I, ha I have to bring my stuff from Scream to stage. But I feel like still didn't really work out yet. Because I, I felt that against KT, like I land only use ult, I just didn't use my skill sometimes. So it's kind of really bad feeling. 
I mean, it's bad for now, but luckily, uh, if everything goes well and KT beat EDG, you still have control of everything, but you do have to beat EDG. So what will be the key then to doing that and, uh, well, forcing the tiebreaker and getting to the next round? Um, I think at MSI, when we were like Jet of Four, like our, my mindset was like, we have nothing to lose, even though we lose one more game, it's okay. But yeah, I think that mindset, I have to get it right now. Because after I started thinking like that, I was like just playing with my own, just like I'm gonna just play whatever I want. So that's why I think I, we could turn the table. Mm -hmm. So I think this time is the same. It's easier than MSI. Then you had to win like four in a row. Now you just have to win this one and the tiebreaker. Do uh, you saw the miraculous run from C9? Did you take any inspiration from what they did? I think they give any hope, like even to us, even to like one day saves, so I really appreciate they just like made made that really miracle run. So I, I really love them. Okay, well we appreciate you as well. I give you the best of luck and hope you can play your heart out versus EDG. Thank you very much, Ole. Back over to you guys. You have to play